it is common knowledge that uh, Nigerians are very innovative in areas of science and tech and so many other areas, home and abroad. How well is the media telling the story of these young innovators in science and technology? Well, I uh, have with me here our in-house uh, science and tech correspondent, Karen Umayo, to help us do justice to this. Let's talk about the media coverage of uh, many of, of these young innovators because, of course, the media tells the story. I know um, some years back, 2015, 16, maybe, at the NTA Arena here, a young boy, a Mika Nelson, just secondary school in one community school somewhere far in the east, he was discovered he made waste to electricity. I had a chat with him recently. He's still trying to do more. He's expanding on it. But I think uh, people like that need more support from many of the um, party and sectors involved. Do you think the media is doing enough to help um, bring these people to the full light? Well, just uh, last month, we had uh, the uh, Technology Expo here in Abuja. We had a meeting edition last year. You could see many more persons, just not the maker. Mm. There, are, there are various kinds of inventions from different categories of, of, of Nigerians, from that level to even the higher level. And uh, apart from just that, there are institutions, you know, that were established basically to come up with some products, problem-solving products and services mm -hmm. that are also doing well. But when it comes to the promotion from the, from the point of view of reportage, Nigerian, uh, uh, Nigerian journalists have done little, so to speak. You know, some of us who have been involved in the coverage of science and technology for over 15 years also have this issue of uh, convincing the editors to put such stories you know ahead of others in fact not just uh, on television or radio even in tabloids yeah. there is this issue of convincing an average nigerian to understand the fact that technology is not just coming from the blues it's something human beings are engaged in and it is a possibility that nigerians can also engage in high technology that can be originated from this country so there is this uh, do i call it a neglect you know of uh, what comes from us it also, it also comes from value judgment of the editor and value judgment of an average Nigerian. An average Nigerian will prefer to, uh, to wear a kente from Ghana as against a, a tie and dye from the southwest of Nigeria. Right, because it's from outside the seashores of this country. Mm. It's also affecting science, technology, and innovation. And even the way we tend to promote that. Right, and again, let me tell you this. Um, in China, when China started this, in the, late, in the early 70s, they started by promoting science and technology to make people understand the concept of science and technology. They stole it from other technologies existing before that time. Mm. Today, China is about the second in command when it comes to science, technology, in and innovation. Mm. Is it a uh, spacecraft? Is it a uh, sat sat satellite technology? They are there. So from that promotion, we'll be able to convince the people that this is the way to go. Because today, technology still drives everything we do, but we buy them. And of course, you know what happens. You spend a lot of money, a, a, a lot of money doing that. Something that can be groomed and formed in, in this country. Okay, um, we know that the government is making efforts to say promote Nigeria, encourage Nigeria, buy Nigeria. Ain't it possible? Is it not a possibility that the media is not making as much hype as should be, uh, like the government is doing in this regard? Maybe with social, with social media, traditional media, tabloid, they come together. People would be able to embrace. Um, these even more? Uh, Cecil, there has to be a consensus here. You know, everybody has to agree uh, towards uh, uh, that, that direction. Uh, I use China as a case in point. There's also Indonesia, you know, where the government made it possible for them to have a concentration of over 43 research institutes. From mm -hmm. research, you move to the next building. It is a place they are going to actualize what has been researched mm -hmm. in the same vicinity, right? And th that makes it easy for you to even bring in the, 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 the private sector who can now commercialize and ensure that the inventor has his patent. But here, the, 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 the system is different because there's no guiding policy that will say, okay, let us look at invention of drone, for instance, mm. which uh, Nigeria efforts has been able to produce. Now, it ends in drone, but others are, are now producing not just a drone, uh, what do you call it, a, a, a remotely controlled uh, flying object, but 
the one with cockpit so somebody can fly. Mm. That is where the technology lies. And I can tell you that we have Nigerians who can design the cockpit. We have Nigerians who can design the aircraft, giving the center. But the point is that there's no policy that, that, that is give, uh, uh, tilting towards ensuring that, look, this country says we will produce aircraft next year. And that has to be the process put in place and followed and completed. Most of the science um, institutes that we have, they they start something, stop somewhere, do your research, it ends at the on, on the shelf for 20 years. Nobody cares because there's no pattern, there's no process, you know, that directs it to uh, where it, it should get to the uh, floor of the manufacturing sector. Yeah, that's where the media should come in and check and you know buzz about it all the time and then maybe hopefully someone will do something sometime. I know in 2016 there was the Asso Villa Demo Day where so many young innovators and startups were discovered. So far, I don't really know how far. Are there so many others of such? You see, know? see let, me, let me read out this for you. You know, you're talking about the younger ones who are experimenting, which is fantastic. Mm. Because from, a, from primary school, if that person gets to tertiary institution, he will be wonderful. Now, Jelani Aliyu, we all know Jelani Aliyu as uh, one of the top most uh, uh, general motors leading uh, 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 de uh, designer for a car like Chevrolet. Mm. Right, so you can imagine this guy went to Brilliant KB Polytechnic in 1988. Mm. So that tells you that if there is, a, well, or there was a policy that this man has no business traveling out of the country. We have mm. a NDBC Enekwe, he developed uh, an invasive surgical robot. This is Nigerian. Mm. We have data born medical doctor who is credited with the invention of the um, emergency auto transmission system. He's Ovia Obade. We have uh, Kule Odu Odutokun. He led the Stanford Hydra Research Project, which developed one of the first cheap multi processes. Uh, multi processes. You know, you know, they are not in Nigeria. This is a, there is a Nigeria. I'm, I'm but they are not in they Nigeria. Are not some, they are not in Nigeria. Because there's no conducive environment for them to prosper with what they know how, with what they know how to do best. Sebastian Ome, best known for his research into the use of wind propelled turbines to generate electricity. Don't we need this kind of man to operate uh, in Nigeria? So mm -hmm. there are many of them. Yemi Adesokri is also there. You have uh, uh, Shehu Saleh Balami. Uh, he, he, he graduated from the Federal University of Technology, MENA. and has been involved in the development of rockets. When I mean rockets, the ones, the type that we see that's launched by NASA. Mm. He has the capacity to design and, 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 and they compute something that can fly several kilometers into the sky. So you're suggesting that brains like this, the government should find how to make home a little more um, a, a, a convenient, conducive for them to come for back For them home. to come back home mm. and, 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 and try to help this nation. Because uh, honestly, Cecil, there's no nation that is great today without indigenous technology. None. And if perhaps you know, we will continue to believe that one day manna will fall from heaven and that happens. It is not going to be possible because those days when we're growing up, you don't talk about Chinese products or Japanese products. It's, like it's a fake, throw it away and all of, all of that. Today, Japan is the greatest when it comes to ICT and even uh, what it calls automobile engineering. They're number one in the world. Uh, as a matter of fact, one of their brands is the largest car manufacturing company in the world. Quickly, just before you leave, mm. you've covered science and tech for a very long time mm. and you've seen so many things. You've traveled really far. What would you suggest, what would you advise that the government or the sectors involved do to help us promote and grow this industry? Very briefly. Well, very briefly, let me start with uh, automobile engineering. Nigerians love cars a lot. That's why I have so many cars in Nigeria, yet we don't have any manufacturing factory in Nigeria. We don't have an even car assembly plant in Nigeria, but, but we, we, we love cars. Now, we can go into automobile engineering. It's a possibility. It's, 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 mm. it's, it's, a, it's a true reverse engineering. Mm. You can get it. If Nigeria says, look, by the next two years, we must produce a car in this country. Let me tell you, sister, it is possible when we direct our, 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 our efforts towards it. If any government says, look, this should be achieved, it can be achieved. Likewise, in other sectors of, uh, or sub-sectors of science, technology, and innovation. And I can tell you that uh, even, even, the young, even the girls are involved in this. Because from what I saw last time, two, three ladies constructed what could serve as a mm. bed, as a table, and of course, as a reading desk in one. Mm -hmm. You just adjust. As you, as, you, as you want to have it. Okay. Girls secondary school, somewhere in a quiet bomb state. So uh, what I'm saying is that, you know, if, if we tailor our mind towards getting things achieved, we have to have the deliverables, not just to begin. Because most times we begin and stop. We begin and stop. In almost all the science and the technology related institutions in this country, they have something to show for it. They, yet, 
it stops somewhere. That's no continuity. There are no deliverables. That's the difference. So, but if we now, if the government can say, okay, fine, let's start, let us build in, uh, bring in new policies, new strategies that will have deliverables and have a timeline for us to achieve, it is the possibility. And then, with respect to uh, my fellow uh, media practitioners, you know, we're not doing much for science and technology. Okay. How many stations have program on science, technology, and innovation yet? What we're using here, like the cameras, the cameras we have here, everything is, uh, is the sensor technology. This. The lighting and everything. So, 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 <laughs> so it's, Kieran, uh, it's thank uh, you very much yeah, for you. enlightening us. I believe we have learned so much. And uh, like you say, deliverables, mm. very important. When Mark Zuckerberg visited Nigeria, he went around some sites and saw very many brilliant, brilliant brains. And he said, indeed, the country is really endowed. So how do we deliver? on these deliverables. These are food for thoughts for those involved and of course the young innovators. The program is in sight. We'll be back in a moment. Yes, it's time to go. Cecil? Yeah, it's been a very educative and insightful time. I like your discussion on the TED phone. There are so many things I got to know about it. And mathematics, well, I like mathematics. <laughs> I used to like it in secondary school. <laughs> uh, maybe I should try my hands and do a little something. <laughs> I should be good at it. The interesting part about TED phone is the fact that the need for people to realize that government means well for Nigerians. If government says so much is taken from companies at the, at the start, 100,000 companies, and right now, the Federal Indian Revenue Service has discovered that about 2 million unregistered companies are in Nigeria. Mm. If that happens, you can imagine what our tertiary institutions would look like. So if you're a beneficiary institution or you're a scholar who is funded to go abroad, please use the money wisely. Right. What do you think? Yeah, I believe we should use it wisely, and I'm glad to know TED Fund is doing this, and they should maybe extend it into science and tech, and let's see how we can... Um, help many of these young innovators to shine through and help solve many of our economic woes. So what do you say to our viewers as we go? Thank you very much for being there to complete this picture. Let's do this again next week. Let's do it always. On behalf of all of us, thanks for being there. <laughs>